Rev up your engine! Now here's Scotty with a little warning about all the green people out there. You know, we don't want to live in a polluted world, I agree. But hydrogen fuel cells take hydrogen, they turn it into electricity and water vapor using this permeable membrane. It's a relatively complex thing, but it works quite well. Do be leery about is it green or is it not green? Because hydrogen can be made lots of ways. It's not hard to make with electrolysis, but it's a relatively inefficient process, and you have to have the electricity in the first place anyway, right? A lot of the hydrogen that's used commercially these days is what they call gray hydrogen. It's not all that clean, because it itself is made from petrochemicals, natural gas, all kinds of petrochemicals to create it. So all hydrogen is not created equally. If somebody figures a way of turning seawater into hydrogen and oxygen, breaking the H2O bonds, and they can do it at an efficient rate, hey, then hydrogen would be clean. There's that guy in California who claims he's going to be able to make these solar towers so efficient that they can get so hot that they can split the hydrogen oxygen bond, and he can create hydrogen from seawater just using sun and these mirrors. If that happens, very clean, right? But <laughs> be leery of the petrochemical business because they're huge. And they want to keep selling that stuff. And as it stands today, a lot of the hydrogen in the United States, the commercial stuff, comes from petrochemicals. And of course, that's a dirty process too. So <laughs> don't think the hydrogen is naturally going to be clean, just like these clowns who went for renewable resource electricity in places like Vermont. And it turns out all they were doing was cutting down all the trees and burning them which is a very inefficient polluting thing, but they said, well, that's biomass. And then they were doing stuff like these guys had the old railroad ties that had creosote and all kinds of chemicals, PCBs that nobody wanted to get rid of. And they were burning those in these biomass uh, electrical generators. And then all these pollutants were coming out of them. So don't always think green is going to be green. Watch that Michael Moore movie that he has about the green. And the greenies all got mad. You know why they got mad? Because Michael, who most people say he's a leftist, and he showed how the green stuff, a lot of it is total BS. It isn't actually green at all. If you're thinking about hydrogen, you got to find where is the hydrogen coming from. Just like if you're thinking about Tesla and those electric cars, where is the lithium coming from, from the batteries? Now in Australia, yes, it's like regular mining. They can mine it. It's hard. They pummel it up, grind it up. It's not too bad. But South America, a lot of those... They make liquid slurries. They pollute tons of water making it. So it even depends where your lithium comes from, whether it's green or not. And, you know, when you buy the car, they're not telling you where that stuff came from. <laughs> so you want to do a little research like Scotty does. See what's actually behind this green revolution. It might not be as green as you think. Now, here's an interesting bit of old technology that can be grafted onto new technology. It turns out that hydrogen fuel cell cars might have root superchargers. Remember back in the day when I was young, people loved those root superchargers. They ran off the engine and they rammed air in to make them go faster. And this is because hydrogen fuel cells need oxygen to go over the cells to produce the reaction. They can use the root supercharger to ram more air in so they work better. Now, originally the roots Superchargers were used in the late 1800s to blast air in blast furnaces, making steel. They added them to cars. Well, now they're adding them to fuel cells. They already make them routes for some of these electric buses that run on hydrogen fuel. It blows the extra air in, so the fuel cells are more efficient, like supercharging your electric system. Since the hydrogen vehicles are basically running on electricity, they have to combine the air, the hydrogen, the catalyst inside, makes electricity, has a little water vapor as a side effect. So just when you think everything that has to do with internal combustion engines is going to go by the wayside, no. <laughs> uh, they already have electric buses out there with root superchargers on them, and they can use them to make the hydrogen fuel cell cars work better. They already use them on some of these electric buses that they have going in Europe. So, hey, this is relatively proven technology already. Now, 
These are electrically driven superchargers because they're not gasoline engine. There's not a gasoline engine it's spinning the whole time, and that spinning will spin a supercharger. These are electric ones. It goes right in with an electric hydrogen cell car. Here we go. The U.S. government getting involved. They're bragging that the United States is backing hydrogen trucks with a new $100 initiative to have hydrogen fuel cells put up in the United States so that they can have stations to be refilled with hydrogen to run the fuel cells. Now, I'm laughing at this one. They're bragging it's a $100 million initiative. This is $20 million a year over the next five years. This is nothing. This is what I can't stand about this government stuff. It's all showcase and basically it's peanuts. It's garbage. I'll give you a perfect example. Amazon, they out of themselves put a billion dollars into Rivian electric trucks because Rivian making electric trucks in Michigan, they're going to be making something like 150,000 electric Amazon delivery trucks. One of the reasons that they put a billion into the company Rivian, Ford Motor Company itself put 500 million into Rivian so they can be making electric trucks. The government saying, oh, we have a $100 million initiative, which is only $20 million a year over five years for making these hydrogen stations. This is nothing. This is typical with government, the corruption and the graft in the government. I can imagine that out of the $100 million, probably two will be actually spent on building and the rest will be paying bureaucrats salaries to make studies. <laughs> it just amazes me the nonsense that goes on with government plans and their initiatives and what actually comes out of them. Big 18 wheelers, it's obvious from what I can see. They're going to be going to hydrogen fuel cells. Saw a thing the other day in Germany. By 2025, they said they're going to have like I think it was 141 hydrogen fuel cell stations across Germany, and that was enough to cover all of their 18-wheeler traffic for the entire country of Germany. Now, Germany's a lot smaller than the United States. There's no arguing that, but they have an actual plan. They're not just talking small-time money. The Germans are talking about spending billions. Here, the U.S. government is a 100 million initiative over five years, 20 million dollars a year. Spit in the bucket, but it goes to show hydrogen fuel cell trucks they probably will be the future. It's it's not that radical of a technology. They've had hydrogen fuel cell stuff in the space program for ages to make electricity and get drinking water for the astronauts when they're out in space. So this is technology that's been out a long time. They scale it up for trucks. Of course, it's going to work with big 18-wheelers. Why? Because of the law of diminished returns. The bigger a truck, the more weighted poles, the bigger the batteries have to be if it's a battery electric truck. And then it becomes, you're not getting much. You're putting these tons and tons of batteries on, but they have to pull themselves too, so you're losing a lot of energy. Hydrogen fuel cells, there's the fuel cell. That's it. Then they just have to be fed with hydrogen. You don't have to carry these giant batteries around. You watch. That's going to be the future of these big vehicles. It's not going to be battery electric. And people laugh at Bill Gates when he says he doesn't see battery electric trucks and battery powered airplanes going to be something that's actually going to work because of the economy of scale. I think Bill was right on that too. <laughs> I said that for years. Hydrogen fuel cells make a lot of sense. Professionals driving them. Maybe one day it'll come down scale. Toyota has it in California that people can buy hydrogen. The only problem with that is they're too expensive now because they don't make that many, and there aren't any places to refill them yet. Think about it. Hydrogen's what? A gas. We got gas lines going all over the country. They can easily convert some of them from natural gas to hydrogen. Isn't that big of a deal? So it can be done. Well, a customer of mine just brought over a Subaru Brat, 1985. And if you're not old enough, here's a little history lesson. It's kind of fascinating. Subaru was bringing these little bitty pickup trucks over to the United States. Well, the Americans got mad and they said, you're dumping them over here and we're going to tax all the pickup trucks coming over. So what did they do? They found a loophole and they built the Brat. Well, the Brat is pretty much a pickup truck, but it's got two seats built into the back bed. <laughs> so technically, it is more a station wagon, a vehicle with seats in the back, and they bypass the tax. They saw a few of them, but it shows you how far people will go to make something economically feasible in an area where they tried to tax them out of it. Uh, years ago, Mercedes did the same thing with their 
vans. They built them in Germany, but the ones they were sent to the United States, they didn't put the engines and transmissions in because there was no tax on bringing in the bodies alone or the engines and transmissions alone. Then they would put them together there so they could say that they were assembled in the U.S. and that bypassed all the taxes on the trucks. Well, later uh, Mercedes ended up buying Freightline and they built their own factory so they build them there, not legitimately, but it's amazing the extremes companies go to in order to sell their vehicles. I kind of liked those brats. They were cool because, you know, they got little arm grabs on the back and seats that are facing backwards. I like those Subaru brands. I wish they brought them back. I thought they were interesting vehicles. Now, of course, you could turn any pickup truck into that if you wanted. You could add seats in the back and put them in, you know, but the brand actually were mass produced that way. I, I always liked those Subaru brands. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.